Welcome to this webinar of the Golden Line during the 65th session of the United Nations uh, Commission on the Status of Women. The theme of this webinar is socially and economically empowering women in mining communities. And we're specifically going to look at experience from the Golden Line program. My name is uh, Morelia Williams. I am the lobby and advocacy manager and at one of the Golden Line's partners, CIMAVI. It's an honor for me to be uh, the moderator of today's session. Among others in this webinar, we will, discuss in more, we will discuss in more depth the drivers for gender discrimination in the mining context, the conditions uh, for women in mining communities to empower themselves, but also we will look at the opportunities to become an entrepreneur in health. The panelists for today's session will share key results and lessons learned from the five-year program, the Golden Line, that, that uh, ran from 2016 to 2020 in Ghana and Tanzania. Before I introduce the panelists to you, maybe a few technical notes uh, or practical notes, however you want to call it. If you have questions, what do you do? So in the uh, on the bottom of, of your screen, uh, you can probably see a Q&A box. So do you have any questions related or um, uh, for any panelists in, in the session? You can do that in the Q&A box. Other general questions and comments you can post in the chat box. It's good to note that this webinar is being recorded. If you have any uh, concerns about that, uh, do send a message um, uh, also in the chat box. The presentations and slides will be shared uh, by email after uh, the webinar. So I'll introduce now the panelists to you. Um, it's uh, and uh, we have uh, today here with us, firstly, Marlene Leifeld. Marlene is a program manager and she works as a specialist in sexual reproductive health and rights uh, for CIMAFI, the lead partner in the Golden Line program. Her work focuses on coordinating the Golden Line program and specifically focusing on empowerment of women living in small scale gold mines communities in Ghana and Tanzania. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Marlene. The second uh, speaker that will be speaking to us today is a former Golden Line program coordinator in Tanzania, Walter Carlos. Walta works for Women's Promotion Center, WPC, in Tanzania, and she brings years of experience in program management, especially on women's economic empowerment and social empowerment. It's good to note that Walta is also an advocate and a lawyer specialized in human rights with a, with a specific uh, specialization in women's rights. Also, Walta, thank you for joining us today. The third speaker for today is going to be uh, Tosca Terra, and Tosca is currently working as a program manager for Healthy Entrepreneurs. Um, at Healthy Entrepreneurs, she is responsible for several new innovations and programs. Tosca is based in Uganda, where she mainly focuses on the implementation of telehealth solutions, whereby support is given to health workers in remote areas. Um, yeah. That's uh, Tosca Terra. Tosca, also thank you for joining us. And finally, last but not least, uh, we have Yao Opuku. Yao is a social, social development specialist with over 16 years of experience in the mining industry in Ghana. Yao holds a bachelor degree in development planning and a master's in development studies. He's currently the Golden Line program manager of Solidaridad in West Africa. Before joining Solidaridad, he was a consultant for the ASM reforms for the Minerals Commission of Ghana. He also worked for the Gold Fields Ghana for over nine years. Also, Yao, thank you for joining us. So let's first go to the first speaker that I introduced, Marlene Leifeld. Marlene, the floor is yours. Thanks for the introduction, Morilio, and hello, everyone. He was I would like to start my presentation by highlighting the important role women are playing in artisanal and small-scale mining. Depending on the country, women comprise up to 50% of the workforce in ASM. However, women in ASM and in mining communities are usually underpaid, undervalued, are running severe health risks and are exposed to violence. 
And this is exactly why we developed the Corner Line program. With funding from the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Corner Line has been working in the past five years for the social and economic empowerment of women living in artisanal and small-scale gold mining communities in Ghana and in Tanzania. In total, we have worked with 25 mines, 1,500 women miners, and 4,500 women living in mining communities. The Corner Line is an initiative of Simavi, Solidaridad and Healthy Entrepreneurs and is implemented in collaboration with local partners. In Ghana, these are Hope for Future Generations and Presbyterian Relief Services and Development. And in Tanzania, these are Umati and the Women Promotion Center. At the start of the Corner Line program in 2016, we have carried out a baseline and a needs assessment in Ghana and Tanzania to look more in detail at the position of women in ASM and surrounding communities. And what this told us is that women and men are having different roles in the mines. In fact, women are usually holding the lowest positions. They are often responsible for jobs like carrying stones, crushing and washing ore, and selling food and drinks. While jobs like drilling, operating machines and supervision are usually solely held by men. For every dollar men mine workers earn, women mine workers in Ghana and Tanzania only make 53 cents and 78 cents. Women's economic opportunities are also limited by their lack of access to skills, land and capital. The baseline indicated that only 23% of the women in Tanzania and 36% of the women in Ghana are having access to credit. And almost none of the women indicated that they had received any form of training. Women in mining communities are also lacking access to healthcare and contraception, and this limits their ability to engage in economic activities. Of the surveyed married couples in the baseline, 35% in Ghana and 40% in Tanzania indicated to use contraceptives. And overall, women are not taking eagerly part in decision-making processes, whether this is in their homes, in their communities, in the mines, and at policy level. The Corner Line baseline also indicated a very high workload for women in mines and in mining communities. Next to their economic activities, women are also responsible for childcare and household work. And finally, the baseline highlighted a high level of gender-based violence in the mines, in the homes and in the communities. For example, in Tanzania, 20% of the women reported to have experienced physical violence by their partner. And the baseline also found evidence of adolescent girls in Ghana engaging in transactional sex as a livelihood to survive. However, what also became very clear is that ASM is an important source of livelihood for women. So there is an urgent need to overcome these challenges. The Corner Line has developed a comprehensive and women-centered approach for the social and economic empowerment of women in mining communities. And in this approach, we made use of the complementary expertise of the consortium members. We have implemented the program at different levels in the mines, in the mining communities, at policy level and the level of the supply chain. In the mines, we have improved women's working conditions and positions. We also worked on increasing the demand for responsible gold in support of women's needs and rights. We have engaged market players to enhance their awareness and their willingness to source ASM that comply with international standards. In the mines and in the mining communities, we have also improved women's access to and control over economic resources. We have established village saving and loan associations and we have provided women with access to business skills and vocational skills. And in the households, we have improved women's participation in uh, decision making on financial matters. To enhance the ability of women to engage in economic activities, we have also improved women's sexual and reproductive health and rights. We have provided women with access to uh, comprehensive sexuality education and with better access to women-friendly health services. 
And finally, um, we have worked on increasing the support uh, for gender equality in mines, in households, in communities, and at policy level. And we made special efforts to engage men and community leaders as agents of change in addressing gender inequality. This was a general overview of the Corner Line program, and my colleagues will now speak more in detail about some of its elements. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Today I'll speak about the approach of the Golden Line program to create conditions for the women in mining communities to empower themselves. And I'll present the methodologies, our achievements, as well as our lesson learned during the implementation of the program. In the Golden Line program, CMAF Partners and Solidarity we are using an approach of the EAST and EMAP. EAST stands for Economic and Social Empowerment, and EMAP stands for Engaging Men in Accountable Practice. Both these two methodologies have originally developed by the IRC to be used in humanitarian settings. But um, in our context, Simavi adapted this methodology to be used in mining communities. And both these two methodologies we are aiming at em empowering women by enhancing women's social support network, as well as to increase women access to and control of economic resources, that is to say here, uh, to empower women economically, and to increase decision-making power of the women, especially at the household, as well as to mitigate against household violence so that women can live in a community where there's no violence against women and girls. To begin with, the first methodology is, as I said before, is stands for economic and social empowerment, and it complies of three phases. Phase one, severe savings and loans association. During this phase, women in the community, they form or establish the women's groups for the purpose of having access to savings and loans, as well as emergency fund for the year, emergency uh, things, or social issues. They are also using this as a platform for the creating a social support network, and this phase, it runs from nine to 12 months. The second phase is again a discussion series. Here, women who are members of the VSL groups now inviting their partners, and for those who are not yet married, inviting a male in the household who are making financial decision. And the aim of this phase is uh, to make sure that these both men and women, they are discussing about needs and wants for the household, also, uh, how to set priorities and ne good negotiation, which can uh, can render to the household uh, to be very strong and uh, good. And uh, they also get an opportunity to learn about inequalities and gender-based violence, especially uh, gender-based violence, which are happening in the household. And the last phase, which is our business skills training, here we empower the these VSLA groups with their skills and knowledge about uh, doing business. And the aim here is to make sure that these women, uh, they generate more income in their, uh, in their uh, VSLA groups so that they can have more money during the share out and they can also get various opportunities because uh, some of the opportunities are being given to the groups who are doing business. The second methodology of the implementation was EMAP, and EMAP stands for Engaging Men in Accountable Practice, and it complies of two curriculum. One, it's a curriculum for women, and uh, during this curriculum, women in the VSLA groups are being trained about violence against women and girls, and they are also discussing about women's hopes and priorities for change. That to say they are discussing about uh, various things like norms and all other relate, things relating to violence against women, which they need to change so that they can live in a community where there's no violence against women and girls. The second part is a curriculum for men. Here men are meeting up together. And uh, we have the so-called uh, male facilitators who were mobilizing other men and form a group of men where they were discussing the issue that has been uh, raised by the women, especially those uh, hopes and uh, things which women they need to change in the community so that they can live in a community where there's no violence against women and girls. And they also uh, learn about tools and knowledge 
truly think belief system to make sure that they abandon all bad norms which are causing um, which are causing gender-based violence, especially at the household level. And uh, these steps, it has 16 sessions, and it runs for four months. We complement the EAST and EMAP methodologies with additional components, and these include vessel registration and linking to financial services. And here we were aiming at uh, ensuring that there's a sustainability of these VSL groups even after the phase out of the program in terms of financial security to women. As you can see on the PowerPoint presentation, this is one among the groups which have been given uh, a loan by the government. And uh, SLH information and referral to services here, we were using uh, VSL groups as a platform for the women to learn and for those who are in need of services, we are being referred to the relevant authorities. For example, in Tanzania, they were being referred to Umati, other partners who were service providers, and even in the government hospital. Also in Ghana, they were being referred to the government facility to get those services. GBV reporting and support system, here women were being assisted each other on how to report the cases concerning GBV, and we did a capacity building training to the Women's Defense Committee so that they can assist these women to report these cases and to get a quick assistance. We, prom we promoted women into leadership so that uh, to increase the chances for the women to be included in decision-making process, especially at the government at the local level. During the implementation of the Golden Line program, we achieved it to have a total number of 212 women's groups with about 4,500 members. And all these 4,500 members were being trained in business skills and sexual and productive health rights. We managed to engage about uh, 3,000 plus men engaging in EASE and EMAP, especially on gender dialogues. And um, in 2020, we had an interim evaluation, and those that showed that uh, there's an increase in financial security to women, which goes together with the financial changes in financial decision making, their household, and the community members have accepting women to decide on spacing the, uh, the children. And um, women in the VSLOA groups, they were assisting each other to make sure that um, uh, they are reporting cases on GBV. In Tanzania, uh, about 83 women who were members of the VSLA groups have been uh, contested for the leadership position, and about uh, 45 women won that election and being part of the village government. In Ghana, women joined traditional authority decision-making process in 10 communities and a unit committee in four communities. For the past five years of implementation, we learned that changing norms takes time, so we need to include our leaders, gatekeepers, and other men from the very beginning in genealogies uh, so that we can achieve more results. And uh, mobilizing men, especially to join gender discussion series, it was uh, challenging, so it requires special support. And uh, bring, uh, to some women bringing money in the household, it can cause uh, both positive and negative. So some women, sometimes it can increase burden of women, but also abuse and misuse by spouses. Formal registration of VSROA assists women to get various opportunities as uh, one of the requirements for the financial security is uh, uh, to be a registered entity. So this formal registration assisted them to get opportunities. As, uh, for example, in Tanzania, two groups were being given loans by the government from Women Development Fund. And uh, in Ghana, two groups were being given loans from the banks. We ran also a uh, vocational skills training needs to go hand in hand with building confidence of women to take up uh, different laws and changing their perspective on what laws they can take up. 
in Ghana, the creation of platform that brings together VSL leaders, women ambassadors, queen mothers, local leaders, and government office officers has created that women um, views to be taken into account because uh, now there is a representation of the women in uh, in various uh, platform like uh, this one, and the women can be free and they can have a place where they can be uh, they can share uh, their views and. Um, what changes do they need in the government and other things. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your time and for the reasoning. Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Tosca Terra. I'm the programs manager within um, Healthy Entrepreneurs. And in the next 10 minutes, I would like to introduce Healthy Entrepreneurs to you and explain our activities within the Golden Line. In Sub-Saharan Africa, there are over 600 million people living in remote and hard-to-reach areas. In these areas, access to basic healthcare and life-saving treatment is often difficult. Um, distances to health facilities are far. Majority of the population actually lives further than five kilometers away from the nearest treatment center. Um, therefore, expenditure on reaching those health facilities and out-of-pocket healthcare expenditures are high. Uh, knowledge in the communities is poor, and therefore poor decisions can be made. Uh, our research shows that rural families in Sub-Saharan Africa spent on average over $12 billion on healthcare costs per year in total. Of these $12 billion, 55%, so more than half, is spent on transport costs alone reaching those far and distance health facility to get treatment that is maybe there, maybe not, maybe free, often paid for. Um, this expenditure is a huge burden or the 55% can be seen as a market potential. And healthy nurse, we feel that this can be spent more effectively and better. We at Healthy in Bervi envision basic healthcare for all. Um, we do this by making use of the existing healthcare structures in the country available. So we make use of the lowest healthcare structure with are the community health workers that are often the first line uh, providers of basic healthcare in remote villages and rural areas. We recruit these community health workers uh, that are far away from health facilities and are living in um, areas that are at least uh, five kilometers away from the nearest health facility. Um, we recruit them and we train them to become small shop owners, or as we call them, entrepreneurs. Uh, after the training, they receive a smartphone containing educational movies and training tools to educate and train their community and they receive access to our supply chain. Um, after the training, they receive a credit in form of healthcare products to kickstart their business in their village and in remote areas. And with the provision of products and information, they are able to support the community with high quality products uh, and information. This results in significant cost savings for the community members. Uh, since they don't have to spend money on transport costs anymore, but can buy health care products and life-saving treatments directly from their community health worker that lives close in their area. At the same time, we generate a sustainable income for these health care workers and motivate them to continue doing their work. Our assortment is a broad range of different types of products. We have a range of personal products, uh, soaps, toothbrushes, um, medicines, and mainly anti-malaria treatment, paracetamol. Um, we provide sexual and productive health products, so we have access to condoms, oral contraceptives. So all of our sexual and productive health products are for free. And we have a range of nutrition products. We only operate in a very remote and rural area. So we, every month we go um, with one of our trucks, collect all the orders and go into the areas, deliver all the products to our entrepreneurs. Um, our area 
uh, where we work is very much off the road, off the beaten track. We really go into the remote villages to deliver and supply our health workers. Uh, we prefer working with women, and that was also one thing why we joined the Golden Line program, since especially also women in these areas um, face challenges. Um, for them, market entry opportunities and uh, employment opportunities are limited. Therefore, we um, recruit these women and allow them to generate a sustainable income. Furthermore, we don't want to burden them with extra work or activities. They are often already high burdened. We only replace their um, work that they did as a voluntarily health worker with now with um, doing the same jobs, the same activities, but getting paid. So um, we actually give them access to the tools and the treatment to um, conduct their work. Furthermore, we provide them with training and education opportunities. So every month, uh, when we deliver products in the communities, we also provide with training. Uh, we have also training opportunities on the smartphone, and we provide remote training. So the profile of our entrepreneurs um, are that they are traditionally community health workers. They are within the traditional system attached to a health facility, uh, preferably women um, with some commercial experience. And preconditions to become an entrepreneur is actually to make a small investment themselves. So when starting your own business, you also need to have some own skin in the game. Uh, in the Golden Line program, we have started our operation in uh, Ghana and Tanzania. Uh, in Tanzania, we've managed to uh, set up a successful operation with over 270 health workers that we supply every month. Uh, we have a lean and small operation with only three staff members and a local warehouse in Gaeta, where we distribute our products from. Um, in Tanzania, due to the strict regulations on what health workers are allowed to handle, we are only able to supply healthcare products to our entrepreneurs. So no medicines, but only soap, diapers, shampoo, and those kind of products. Um, luckily, we have a broad assortment of healthcare products uh, and we are able to still run a sustainable business for us as well for the entrepreneurs with only these healthcare products. Uh, and in addition to community health workers, we've only also set up Edo shops. So those are more pharmacy shops whereby we trained women in these Edo shops also to supply pharmaceutical pro uh, products. Um, and with uh, these 270 entrepreneurs and with our small operation, we are able to run a sustainable business, uh, meaning that even after the program ends, so the Golden Line is now ended, we can continue delivering training and supporting our entrepreneurs uh, long, um, yeah, for a long, long, long time. Um, in Ghana, we also uh, uh, have managed to set up a successful um, Project, although a bit different since we actually noticed that in Ghana, access to healthcare in rural communities is not that much of an issue. It's actually quite well organized. So therefore, the need of our model um, uh, was a bit different. Uh, we adjusted a model whereby we now um, supplied bigger loans to our entrepreneurs. And instead of having one central warehouse, uh, we made deals with nearby distributors and entrepreneurs could choose um, uh, yeah, their own assortment and buy from our selected distributed with a discounted product. So it's more of a microfinancing um, model uh, whereby we still meet our entrepreneurs every month, provide a training, and on those monthly meetings, entrepreneurs were able to pay back the credit. Some of the results, so both in Ghana and Tasnia, we have trained over 270 entrepreneurs. Um, as you can maybe see, the focus uh, in Tanzania and Ghana was a bit different. In Tanzania, there was a lot more focus on uh, for entrepreneurs on training um, their community members. So over 90,000 trainings have been done uh, in the community. And in Ghana, there was a bigger focus on the distribution and supply of products. So there are over 400,000 
healthy and safety products have been distributed in the remote areas. Some of the key lessons learned is that indeed our model is only effective in those areas where distance to health facilities are more than five kilometers. So that's also why in Ghana we have adjusted our model um, and actually we, um, we didn't see that much of a need of our model. Um, we really want to work with FEMO entrepreneurs who uh, have proven to be trusted and motivated. Um, recruitment and selection of the entrepreneurs is definitely key. Uh, therefore, we have an extensive recruitment process uh, since we do invest a lot of training and resources in entrepreneur. We want them to um, remain with us and, and keep motivated. Um, with the use of technology, uh, we are able to supervise and uh, support our entrepreneurs um, on the distance and thereby are able to manage a lean operations um, with uh, a fewer number of staff needed. Um, integrate of a broad assortment, so not focusing on one, uh, for example, um, contraceptives or uh, malaria, but having a full assortment uh, which creates a one-stop shop so the community members can just go for everything to entrepreneurs uh, really allow us to create a sustainable model um, and actually one of the main lessons learned now with the COVID uh, outbreak is that telehealth is definitely innovation that can support um, health workers from a distance with additional training and supervision to end, a small impact story from Grace, an entrepreneur in Tanzania, who was saying, I was working voluntarily as a community health worker. So we were promised to pay a small stipend per month, but I haven't been paid ever since. My only source of income was selling fruits around the neighborhood. This made me not fulfill my need and became dependent on my husband. After joining Health Entrepreneurs, I received a three-day training on how to run a viable business and how to use a tablet how to become aware of health issues and how I can educate my community on different health topics. I am now able to do business. I was giving a startup capital, which is a loan with no interest of product basket with quality products to sell in my community. With my work as a health entrepreneur, I generate enough money to pay school fees for my children and buy them supporting materials like uniforms or books. I can save enough money and get a clear picture of how my business is going. I know how to do my bookkeeping. As a parent, I always dreamed for the best of my children, and now I see my achievements. Also, I am living a happier life in my community because I have built work trust to my community. I supply them with best health products and educate them on how to use the product for great outcomes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, wherever you may find yourself. My name is Yaobrich Mupoku. I'm the Gold Program Manager for Solidaridad West Africa. I'll be speaking on the topic, creating conditions for women in mining communities to empower themselves. The main outcome of the mine component of the Golden Line program was to see improved working conditions and positions of women in the mines. As mentioned earlier, the Golden Line program was implemented in Ghana and Tanzania. In Ghana, it was implemented in the Western, Western North and Ashanti regions of the country and in Tanzania, it was implemented in the Gaeta region, that's the northern part of Tanzania. In all, 25 small-scale mines were supported. Um, out of that, we had 10 from Ghana and also 15 from Tanzania. We also supported over 1,500 women in, in total, and 500, approximately 500 in Ghana and 1,000 in Tanzania. Irresponsible mining practices endangers women's health. In order to address this challenge, we train the mine workers, including women, in responsible practices such as health and safety, environmental management, and responsible use of mercury. And we also instituted health, safety, and environmental sensitization during their toolbox meetings, which are held every morning before they start work. We then provided them with safety signages, first aid kits, and also PPEs. Um, we generally provided on-site technical support to the project mines in order to ensure improved practices because we weren't just 
um, giving them the theory or just training them, but also ensuring that they put in measures to help improve on practices on the mine sites. Women in ASM are generally engaged in low paying roles such as carrying of the ore on the mine sites. We realize that the women lack the requisite skills to be engaged in better roles on the mines. The program therefore sought to help improve on the positions of these women um, by coming up with two key strategies. The first was to support the women to build their skills. And the second was to engage with mine management and um, to create space for the women to take up um, higher positions on the mines. So what did we do specifically? First of all, we sensitize the women miners to build their confidence to be able to take up better roles on the mines. We also went on to then train the women miners um, in excavator operation, mineral processing, assaying, et cetera, in order for them to get the necessary technical skills to be engaged on the mine sites. Um, lastly, we engage with mine management to provide on the job training as well for the women and also to create opportunities for them to get better roles on the mine. One other challenge that the program identified was that women miners were not involved in the decision-making process at the mine level. This was mainly because most of the women were casual workers and did not really see themselves as being part of the mine. In order to address this challenge, we formed women's groups on the mine sites, averaging about um, 25 women per group, um, to serve as entry points to improving on gender issues on the mines. And um, we also built their capacity in leadership skills, advocacy, and also lobbying, and also supported them to form what we call the Village Savings and Loans Associations, um, where they save monies and use the monies to help improve on their other um, businesses. We then also train mine management on the ability of women to be leaders as well, and also developed and implemented a grievance mechanism on the mines with the involvement of management and also the women miners. To realize that we targeted both the women and also um, mine management in trying to address um, this particular issue. The end line um, evaluation of the program revealed a positive relation between gender equality training and also a positive attitude towards women in non traditional roles on the mines. Um, there was also increased perception in both countries on the roles that women can take up in the mines. This they saw themselves because um, some women had the opportunity of starting new roles on the mine sites. Um, in Tanzania, 15 mines um, now have women in leadership positions and mines in both countries have also made investments um, to make the workspace safer. Um, so now women have um, a better places to work uh, or safer places to work. Um, examples include they have a first aid kits on the mine sites, um, they have having safety signages, um, et cetera, et cetera, also providing PPEs to um, their workers. Um, the study also revealed that um, verbal and physical abuse in the mines had decreased, uh, with women indicating that men treat them with more respect than um, before the program. However, there were still some uh, women who um, faced abuse, 13% um, verbal and also 8% um, of them said that they faced physical abuse. In addition, about 33% of women report the, that they face fewer challenges um, than before, with 7% um, saying that they face uh, more challenges. After five years implementation of the Golden Line program, um, we learned that involvement and commitment of mine leaders is pivotal to the success of sustainable change in the mines. Um, perceptions of leaders need to be checked in time and before the mobilization of women. Um, empowering women comes with a risk of disappointment. You don't have a situation whereby you provide a woman with the specific skills and she's not able to get better rules on the mine side. So there's a need for you to also engage with mine management um, to be able to ensure that they create space um, for the women. We also learned that skills training improves employability, but it's not enough um, to raise wages. Um, you need to also ensure that you link them up to um, possible rules on the mine sites before they can get better wages. Um, we then um, learned also that promoting the inclusion of women in management and technical roles in the mines is effective in contributing in the shift of gender roles and also help to identify specific needs 
for the um, female employees. Lastly, we learned that the Village Savings and Loans Association, or the women's groups um, that we formed, um, women's groups generally can be good entry points to improve women's decision making power on the mine sites. In conclusion, um, we ask all of you to support us to create a better future for women in ASM. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Yao, and thank you um, to all the panelists um, today for, for giving their keynote speak, speech. So we will now go into a Q&A um, uh, yeah, part of this uh, webinar in which we will um, yeah, we'll, we'll ask a few questions. It was already uh, posted in the chat box, but just a reminder to anyone, if you have specific questions on um, what was just shared, you can uh, post them in the in Q&A box and we'll try as much as possible to, uh, to touch upon those. Um, questions. So um, let's uh, then have uh, yeah a uh, dialogue and I'm looking at the panelists just checking if everyone maybe could turn their cameras on so um, yeah we can kick start this part and I would like to uh, maybe start with uh, with Marlang. Uh, Marlang you mentioned in the beginning that uh, some influencing work was done um, can you give us some examples of which specific uh, influencing uh, lobby work you were referring to in um, in your story? Yes, thanks, Murillo. Um, we carried out advocacy activities at different levels, uh, in the communities, at national level and international level. And at local level, I would like to highlight our work with the um, community ambassadors. Um, these are women that are linked to the VSLAs and that we support to bring issues uh, that come out of the discussions in the VSLAs to the attention of uh, local community leaders. Um, and uh, at international level, uh, I would like to highlight um, the advocacy that we carried out together with women's rights in mining. And um, yeah, Solidaridad and Simavi are among the co-founders of women's rights in mining. And this is an international working group that is comprised of uh, government organizations, NGOs, and uh, research uh, organizations. And together we have lobbied to secure commitments from key stakeholders uh, in the mining sector to uh, address uh, gender concerns. An example that I would like to give is that we have developed an um, a gender statement together with the uh, OECD secretariat. And this was um, adopted uh, during the OECD forum in Paris two years ago. And it has now been endorsed by 35 organizations. Um, yeah, so for those people who are interested to learn more about women's rights in mining, we can share the website in the chat box. Great, thank you so much. Um, could you maybe mute yourself so that we don't have the, the echo? Thanks for sharing that, uh, Marlene. And uh, maybe um, we could indeed uh, drop in the chat box also the website that you are referring to um, so that people can um, yeah can look into that. Um, and then I would like to go to, to Walda. And there was a question from the audience. Um, you mentioned that um, uh, special efforts are needed to engage men. Which effort um, did you successfully, uh, yeah, actually um, uh, use in in the past five years, especially when it comes to men engagement in the program? Okay, thank you, Morillo. Uh, we were using um, the approach of uh, involving local. Leaders and um, all those local leaders to mobilize other men to be part of those groups. 
And we were also using the coffee shop during the, uh, the evening because um, in Tanzania, uh, most of the men during the evening, they have a tendency of uh, being gathering together in a coffee shop. So those male facilitators were using that platform to mobilize other men to join the IMAP and to Thanks. learn some of Thanks. the behavior change. Thank you. Thanks, Walter. And maybe uh, to continue a little bit on that, because there were also a few questions related to this. How uh, did how did um, the program experience actually um, the reaction of the men? Were, how did the men react? Basically, that was the question that came from this. Um, and also um, in terms of um, you know anti-violence and uh, equality uh, rhetorics. It, how did men react when when uh, certain uh, subjects were discussed? Okay, during the the training, especially uh, during the, the, the uh, when they are conducting their sessions, especially for those men who are part of the groups, uh, some of them they found themselves that uh, what they were doing to women and girls uh, it was not a good thing. So. They accepted to be allies or supporters of the uh, people who are ending up gender-based violence. So after getting um, all those uh, awareness sessions, then they went also to raise some more awareness to other men in the communities as an effort to the uh, uh, to facilitate the end up of the gender-based violence against women and girls in the mining communities. Thank you. Thanks, Walter. And I think this uh, actually um, uh, connects best to uh, the next question, which focuses more on um, unexpected results. Um, and this question is um, actually for Tosca. Um, are there any, um, in your presentation, you spoke about, for instance, uh, uh, run, running a sustainable dis business for entrepreneurs beyond uh, the end of the program? Um, but now um, the program has ended. Um, are there any unexpected results um, that uh, you can maybe elaborate a bit more on? Um, yeah, so some of the um, uh, unexpected results we see is actually that we really, um, um, so within the Golden Line uh, program, we only focused on working with women. So the, our operations in uh, Ghana and Tanzania are, um, yeah, the network is only from female entrepreneurs, um, which in the beginning was quite a challenge to, um, uh, because you have some recruitment limitations. Uh, but we do see now that this uh, network of women is actually, um, yeah, much better performing and motivated than if we compare it to, um, for example, Uganda or Kenya, where we also work with uh, with male entrepreneurs. Um, these women are often, yeah, uh, very motivated, really see this as an opportunity to start uh, uh, generating an income, start their business, uh, are much more reliable and also paying back their credit. Um, so I think that's definitely something, a lessons learned that we can draw from this, uh, this program and that we have started implementing also in other um, countries that we operate. Um, furthermore, what we also noticed after doing an, uh, a survey of motivation, because um, our expectation was actually that uh, the income generating uh, component was the biggest motivation for these entrepreneurs to stay active and to stay working with us. But actually what we realized is that the biggest motivation for them to continue as an entrepreneur is all of the educational tools and trainings that we give to them. So it's really on the smartphone or uh, on the tablet that we give um, that has educational videos and training tools that they can use to train and educate their community. Um, based on surveys and interviews, actually, that was the biggest component for these entrepreneurs to really, um, yeah, continue working with us as an entrepreneur because they really feel empowered um, to share their knowledge in their community to uh, to provide training. Um, yeah, so I think those are some of the unexpected results. Um, maybe also to link on, on your uh, question at the beginning for the sustainability factor after we continue um, with this program. Um, 
we, we didn't really expect actually in Tanzania to be sustainable in the end only with health products because majority of our, our margin uh, and our revenues actually comes from the sales of, of over-the-counter medicines and um, malaria and diarrhea and pneumonia treatment, uh, which in other countries are allowed to be sold by community health workers, but in Tanzania it's, it's not. Um, but still with, with the provision of only health products, um, we can, uh, yeah, have a broad enough assortment, uh, make enough um, margin on the products. So for the entrepreneur to to yeah sustain our business, to really have an um, yeah an income for herself and for us as health entrepreneurs to uh, to continue the operations without external funds needed. So really only from the revenues or the small revenue that we make, we can uh, continue supplying and training our entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Tosca. Maybe to uh, go a bit deeper into that and also what something you mentioned earlier on sustainable cost savings. Um, what cost savings do you see on, on average um, or, or specifically within the Golden Line program? Um, so the majorly the cost saving that we see is on the transport um, Costs, so we really um, take that part of that that expense away for a majority of the people. They uh, very normally pay yeah high transport uh, or or miss like a full day of work, reaching um, uh, pharmacies in, in cities or hospitals. They now save time and save transport cost by directly getting it from the community member. Uh, but we also are cheaper than what can be found in nearby pharmacies. So on average, our uh, pro uh, products are sold for about 15 to 20 percent um, cheaper than what can be found elsewhere. Uh, this is really due to very low margins, um, very small operations, uh, very being very cost efficient. Like we are thinking about every expense we are thinking if it's needed, if we can do it better, if we can do it cheaper to keep the prices as low as possible. Um, we uh, we purchase in bulk. Uh, we make we make good deals, and we bring it directly to the entrepreneur, so they don't have to travel also to to get the products. Um, we uh, we bring it directly to the doorstep of these entrepreneurs. Perfect, great, and that links back to the sustainability, of course, of the of the program. Um, I would like to jump to uh, to Yao actually because we've heard uh, several other panelists also speak about you know, working um, uh, or putting women at the center of the program. I was wondering over the past uh, five years of your work, Yao, do you think women involvement in mining has increased or decreased? And what is your, uh, yeah, how would you elaborate on that? Okay, so generally um, in Tanzania, women's involvement in mining has increased. Um, to the extent that I think I didn't mention that in my presentation, to the extent that we do have women being part of management of all the mines that we worked with um, in Tanzania. Unfortunately, in Ghana, um, there was a ban on small scale mining, I think about two, three years ago, um, for close to one and a half years. And this has had a negative impact um, on uh, mining in general in the country or, or on ASM in the country. So most of the mines now are, are not working at full capacity. Um, so they've reduced the number of workers on the mine sites, um, which has of course it, uh, um, affected some women as well. So in, in Ghana, um, it's gone down, but in Tanzania, we've, we've had increased number of women being employed. Um, but generally also realize from the program that uh, we're able to um, achieve one very good um, outcome that um, the Positions of women improved on the mine sites due to the trainings that due to the skill skill strain that we gave to them, and some were able to change or to get new roles on the mine sites that were paying more. Um, so quality wise, yes. Quantity wise, no. Okay, thank you, thank you so much uh, for that, Yao. Um, and could you maybe elaborate because you just mentioned it also a little bit on the ban, um, but maybe elaborate a bit more in depth for people who don't uh, are not uh, super familiar with that how the ban actually um, affected women specifically in uh, the golden mine program um okay um so um in 20 i think in may 20 let me let me give a background to the ban first 
I mean, 27, May 2017, thereabouts, um, the government of Ghana imposed the ban on small scale mining. Um, and that was based mainly on the fact that um, the activities of um, small scale miners were having a negative impact on especially water bodies and also on um, the environment in general. Um, so there was a ban for about close to one and a half years, um, um, which of course affected those living in mining communities. Um, about 51% of small scale miners are women in Ghana. Um, and generally we have about 1 million people employed in the sector. So that means we have about over 500,000 women losing their livelihoods as a result of the ban on small scale mining. And if we consider um, a household size of about 4.5 people, um, then that means affecting about um, close to 5 million people generally. Also, um, the other negative impact of the ban on women was that most women in mining communities do have livelihoods that are dependent on, on, on mining. So of course, once there's no mining, then it's very difficult for them to engage in their livelihood activity. So that means that it affected lots of people um, who live in mining communities to the extent that um, most of these mining communities had very serious um, unemployment issues, um, people had to relocate to other communities to look for jobs because there, there was virtually no life in some of these communities. So it did really have a very negative impact on especially the women because most of the women also, um, their livelihoods were dependent on the mines. They had those trading, for instance, um, those in the markets, et cetera, providing some form of support um, or provide some form of service to the mines. So all these, um, women who live in mining communities have their livelihoods being affected as a result of the ban on small scale mining. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Yao. Um, and I'm looking at the time we actually uh, started a bit later. So um, maybe I'll take one more question um, and then I'll ask all the panelists to conclude five years golden line in one word. So you can start thinking about that. Um, the final question um, is for Melaine. Marlene, in addition to working with women's rights and mining, did you work with uh, local or regional women's uh, NGOs uh, and which ones? And what was their specific role in, in the program? Um, well, the Colder Line itself is a, is a consortium. So at local level in Ghana and Tanzania, we, um, yeah, we worked uh, in an alliance uh, with different organizations. Um, and we had local implementing partners. So in Ghana, these were Presbyterian Relief and Development Services and Hope for Future Generations. And in Tanzania, we worked with WPC, where Walta is working, and uh, Umati. Uh, we also collaborated with um, uh, female mining associations. Um, and of course, with a lot of local CBOs and government stakeholders, uh, community leaders, um, yeah. So a wide range. A wide range. Yeah, of we were. Yeah, we worked with a right, wide range of uh, of stakeholders at different levels. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so I think maybe now we can give. Maybe you can immediately sum up your one word, uh, Marlene. Five years golden line. How would you sum that up? Yeah, maybe linked to what I just said, the word that comes up to me is uh, synergy. Um, yeah, I think we have really managed in the call the line to use the complementary expertise of uh, the consortium members. And um, in this way, um, yeah, um, reinforced each other. Uh, we are very different organizations. Uh, who have different expertise, but through our collaboration, I think we, we achieved much more than we could have achieved alone. Perfect. That's something I'm uh, really proud of. Thank you so much, Marlene. Thank you for that. And thank you for your contributions. Um, could you maybe mute yourself? Because I hear myself uh, when you're not muted. Um, Tosca, I'll go to you now to do it in a different order. What uh, is your word uh, for the end of this session? Um, I would say, I think, impactful. Um, we have had on all levels, uh, high top 
top up uh, down below like implementation but also advocacy uh, we've worked on all different levels and all at the end came together um, and we really saw a lot of uh, of impact um, and and long-term impact as well we've really changed minds we set um, yeah new standards um, managed to do some behavior change so i think also the impact can uh, can last for a long time perfect thank you so much uh, for that um and then I'll go to uh, to Yao. What's your word? Um, I'll go for interesting. Um, interesting in the fact that uh, the reason being that uh, we had a number of organizations that we worked with in both Ghana and Tanzania. And because apart from the three main consortium partners, we also had local partners as well that we worked with. And um, also we targeted a number of issues, both on the mine sites and also uh, on in, in the mining communities as well. We're looking at sexual reproductive health rights issues, looking at health issues in general, doing VSLs in the communities, supporting miners um, as well, um, also undertaking policy advocacy as well. So I see it as quite an interesting program, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Yao. Interesting. It is indeed interesting. Um, and then finally, we'll go to Walta. Uh, Walter Carlos, what's the word uh, that you would like to leave us with? Okay, on my side, the world is uh, empowerment because uh, during the past five years, we were working as the partners, although uh, all of us, uh, we had uh, the same goal to empower women economically and social. And that's why each partner complements to his or her part, including uh, giving health services to women, but also even empowering them by establishing those DSLA groups. And now women are happy and are enjoying what we leave to them. And they are, they are still doing uh, uh, these uh, savings activities. So that is a uh, good time to me. And uh, I can say this, uh, it has been a very full empowerment to women. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Walter. Um, so to sum that up, um, synergy, impact, interesting, and empowerment, five years golden line, socially and economically empowering women in Ghana and Tanzania. Thank you to all the panelists for taking the time um, in sharing this knowledge um, and the results of the golden line with us. Um, and for the participants joining, uh, please do feel free to still visit the website. If you have any questions, reach out uh, on the email address in screen. Um, and thank you all for joining and have a good day, afternoon, morning, and uh, yeah, we'll see each other soon. Bye-bye.